Y'all don't even know what to start off with. I'm so serious. Y'all think I'm playing. Good morning and happy Sunday. Once again, the good Lord has blessed me to see another Sunday. And once again, I can't thank him enough for giving me the platform and the opportunity to speak to people, to reach people, to help people get in and out of their troubles. To he's, I mean, people also are blessing me as well. When I come on this talk show and I learn so much from so many people, and it's very humbling to actually be able to actually come into people's households and homes and, and make a difference in somebody's life. Like I always tell you guys, it's not it's not what Archie gets out of it, it's what it's what Archie gives to others to make them better. So today in studio, I have Miss Robin Smiley. She's the visionary of Come Up Come Higher, Come Up Higher Ministries. Don't want to mess that up. And also Miss Connie Gilmore from Premature Widow. Um the show's gonna be a very powerful show. We're gonna speak from the the aspect of relationships, um, whether it being single, whether it being divorced, um, marriages, and also Miss Miss um Miss Connie is gonna talk about which is a very touching subject, um and a lot of people don't talk about it, is about widows, being a widow. It's um it's one of those things, like I told you guys, and the purpose of me bringing my radio show to fruition is to talk about a lot of things that people don't talk about. Uh, we've talked about losing siblings. We've talked about mental health issues. We've talked about child support throughout the shows. Um, but the widow part um, is very. But I'm not going. I'm not going to get into it. That's why we have them in the studio because you, you guys know me. I get very sensitive and I want to um, shoot my my spill. But I'm going to introduce my guest today. So in the studio, I have with me Miss Connie Gilmore. Say hello to the people. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And while, while you're in the mic, go ahead and give us, share a little bit about yourself. Um, so I'm Connie Gilmore, the founder of Premature Widow. Uh, Premature Widow was birthed in 2015. Um, in the year of 2014, I lost my 38-year-old husband mm -hmm. and um, quickly realized that there were little to no resources available for widows, especially the young widow. Yes, ma'am. And so Premature Widow was birthed. It's a sisterhood of widows. Um, we fellowship together, we pray together, we support one another. We have um, events to raise funds so that we can continue to raise awareness to the organization. And um, it's, it's grown, and it's a fortunate yet unfortunate situation. Um, as you know, you watch the news all the time. There are a lot of things going on in the news, even with, you know, the police officers and, you know, just ran random people around town with different accidents and things, and it's impacting families and leaving young women as widows with young children with very little support um, around the area sometimes to do, you know, to have that type of support. And there's nothing like having someone to talk to that knows what you're going through. And so that's what we, that's what we are. And okay. we try to, you know, grow that. We're growing that. We're yes, growing that organization um, daily. You know, I just got a call last night, as a matter of fact, of a young lady who lost her husband on yesterday. Okay. So it never stops. It never All stops. right. Well, we're going to, we're going to definitely tap into that. We're going to definitely have that conversation. Also, we have in the studio Miss Robin Smiley. Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Robin Smiley, and I am the visionary of Come Up Higher Ministries. And our goal is to help people to grow in every aspect of their relationships, especially their relationship with Christ. This ministry um, was founded in 2013, and it was birthed actually out of a women's conference um, that I held at my former church. 
Um, and so 2013, we, we launched the ministry and we've been going strong ever since. Um, this year um, will be our second annual relationship conference and we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. Outstanding. There you have it. All right, well, let's get into it. So the number, the call-in number is 1-800-450-7876. Again, the call-in number is 1-800-450-7876. So this is how we're going to do it because both, wow, both topics are very, are very needed in today's society. So we want to, we, we're going to go to you, um, Reverend, Reverend Smiley or Robin. Robin you know, I want to, you're Robin, okay, I want to be correct. So in your experiences, in the reason, so what made you come up with, come up higher ministries? What was your, you know, you, I know you say you use a visionary of it, but what made you stop in your tracks when they say, hey, look, I need to do something to help others? Um, because what I found is that people get in a rut. They just go to church Sunday after Sunday just to check off the block. And then they're not really um, even understanding what it is they're hearing. They're not growing. And then when situations happen in their life, i.e. they lose a spouse or they lose their job or, you know, when problems come up, they don't know how to handle them. Mm -hmm. So it's all about establishing that real relationship with Christ so that as these things come up, at least you have a foundation to return to to help you to grow. Outstanding. So... <sighs> We live in a society when, when everyone just thinks they know everything. So everybody thinks they know the scriptures. Everybody thinks they know their own family members. Everybody thinks they know themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people listen to you when you tell them X, Y, Z about themselves. They don't want to receive it. Mm -hmm. So do you encounter that when you interact with, you know, your various clients or people that you deal with? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, just this past Thursday, I, I, I facilitate a class at my church, and we were going through... Um, the lesson and one of the young ladies was just outright, you know, I didn't like this lesson. It made me angry and I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I said, well, baby, that's, that's the choice that you're making, right. but I hope you understand the repercussions behind that choice. Yeah, that's funny. I, um, I come from a, a mentoring background and it's funny how I go into homes and I often tell the families, this is not Coach Archie's way. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from this information is coming from all the kids and the families that I've encountered. Mm -hmm. So I'm not creating these answers. Mm -hmm. These are actual answers and situations that people have been in. And people share their stories, some of their most deepest stories with me on how they came out of something. Mm -hmm. So now, with you, Ms. Connie, I know there are, there are people out here that in a widow, being a widow is... is I, I mean, I can't tell you how it feels, but I just, just know from talking to people, mm -hmm. any loss... Is very detrimental and it can really change the course of your life but that speaks volumes about who you are as a person to actually want to get that word out about premature widows what so I know what what led you to it but in your walk how do people receive your message and there are there a lot of women and also there are men too that are widows are you that you're coming in contact with people reach out to you absolutely um, constantly people reach out and um, the response has been overwhelming and I hear so often how, um, you know, they realize th they, they're so excited about there being something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even the older widows, I've heard them say to me, I wish that there was something back 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Right. And so the, the response has been overwhelming, as a matter of fact. And we, we just help. And it's, it's, again, it's a sisterhood. It's a ministry of help. And it's a ministry that was so needed. And, you know, we just want to get it out amongst the community because while I do have a great number of women that and a few men, you know, we're trying to grow into the mm -hmm. widowers as well. But I realize that there is a, an enormous amount of people that are untouched. Yes. That don't know that premature widow exists within our own community that are, you know, they're suffering um, alone and in silence. And we go to church every Sunday and they have a need that's not being addressed because... Even as myself, you you know, we've, I've grown up in church all my life, but widowhood is not something that we talk about in church. Right. Let's what's 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 your definition um, of premature widow for listening orders? So my definition of premature widow, um, it's it's twofold. Um, it's the young widow, not necessarily in age, but you know, definitely the younger widow in terms of you know maybe fifty or under that still has younger children. Awesome. But then premature in a sense that you know sudden death. Gotcha. Premature, yes, something that wasn't expected. You know, we all we get married. You know, for better or for worse. You know, till death do us part. And we hope that that is 
that allows us to grow old together on the on the porch and right. you know drink lemonade and grow old but that's not always the case right. and more often than not it's not the reality um for a lot of us that have you know prematurely become widows and or widowers in, in a situation that we did not at all expect to find ourselves in okay but throughout the show i'm gonna tell you ladies thank you i'm gonna often say thank you to you ladies because we, once again, we live in a society where there are a lot of people crying out for help on all aspects. And and the people that listen to like talk radio shows, I get that you listen to it for entertainment or what have you. I always challenge my listeners to, if if you know a show topic is going on and you know somebody in your family, whether it be a co-worker or a friend of somebody, engage them in the conversations. Talk radio is not meant to be entertainment. You know what I mean? Talk radio is meant to bring you close to either God, bring you closer to yourself, or bring you closer to your decisions that you're making. Mm -hmm. So we we take for granted a lot of a lot of from parenting, from a parenting aspect, a lot of parents are saying they just don't know what to do with their kids. Mm -hmm. But in fact, there are a lot of things online, there are a lot of radio shows, there are a lot of conferences. Now, I'm the first person to tell you I can throw three conferences and the turnout will be very minimum. Mm -hmm. But people want their help. But people don't want to step up and actually go get that information. So I often challenge people every Sunday, when you listen to not just my show, but any other show, get something out of the show. We have two dynamic ladies in studio today. Once again, the number is 1-800-450-7876. 1-800-450-7876. Even if you don't call in because you need a question for yourself, at some point, we have to start calling and congratulating people that are, are walking the walk instead of just talking the talk that's trying to bring change to our community. There, there are some other things that I face um, doing talk radio and also going out and about. A lot of people, they have issues, but they don't know how to say, okay, let me, let me do this. If, if either one of you guys actually have a one-on-one -on -one with somebody, and we were just talking about it previously, if they don't know how to receive, and like you just said, Robin, about the young lady said, this just doesn't work. So at that point, what do you do to, I don't want to say force it, but what are your some of your tools that you use to actually kind of bring that young lady back in? Because you definitely know she needs this help. Mm -hmm. So what, 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 what ways do you go to handle that? Basically what I do, sometimes I just give that person just a little bit of space and then follow back up and okay. say, okay, I know you were responding out of emotions or, you know, but let's relook at the situation. Let's evaluate it. Give me, and then I, I turn it back on them. What do you think would be the best solution? How can you see yourself overcoming this issue? And then, based on their comments, then I can give them some more guidance on what to do. Okay. But you know, when you bring it, when you put it back on them and make them feel like they're really more a part of the decision versus you just telling them this is what you need to do, sometimes that helps people be more responsive. Okay. Everybody that knows Coach Archie, they know me on this show. I I shoot it straight from the hip. We got two minutes, my man. Okay. Well, I'm going to come back to that because I haven't thought. But I'm going to start it out. We're going we're gonna, to we pick it right over there. What do you say to the people that give up on God when something don't work out for them? When people <laughs> give up on God. <laughs> and then they want to get them back. They give up on for that moment, but then they want to they be his friend again. Yeah. I've, I've been that person. Okay. Understood. Me too. I've been that person. <laughs> um, walked away from God when my first marriage didn't work. Um, but if you've already got that relationship established, there you go. because God is so faithful, he go. won't let you stay out there. You said something there. Connie, you want to? Um, I, I can just con <laughs> concur with that. Um, I, I, that's absolutely right. You know, he won't let you get too far out of his reach. That's just how God is. So we're gonna, we're gonna come. We and I, I told my my guests in the studio that we um the show is kind of open, and we're gonna. That's a very that what we just said mm -hmm. is so powerful in itself. That people don't get it. So we're going to try to find a way to break it down, ladies, so people can understand and they don't give up on him so fast. Because the people that give up on him, they don't realize you got to have a relationship with him to give up on him. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you don't even have a relationship and you're giving up on him, you're going to need something at some point. That all right? right? Hey, you listen to WL 95.5. Mm, I done messed that all up. This is public radio. Please forgive me. Nah. 95.9 <laughs> FM, 1450 AM. WLDCnews.com, information is power. This is the Archie Beslow Radio Show. Let's figure it out. We'll be right back. Thank you. All right. So, like I said, we're still live. 
So basically, so that's a very that dynamic of it is is huge in itself. From the premature widow to even come up higher ministries, in order for any of even coach the mental, in order for any of us to be effective, we have to understand where people are mm -hmm. with their spiritual relationship. Mm -hmm. Because me, I can't have a conversation with you if your spiritual relationship is blocked Absolutely. or is not powerful because now you're going to bring me down. Exactly. You know, how you guys feel about that? Definitely. Um, it, makes it, it makes it very difficult to have that type of relationship. Even when you, you know, want to talk to them without saying, you know, Ephesians 6, da, 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 yeah, yeah. you know, there has to be some level of understanding in order to really be able to have that conversation. Um, the Bible even talks about, that, you know, it's foolishness to those who don't have that relationship. So sometimes if you're fairly trying to push the word on somebody and they don't even have the relationship, you're just wasting your time. Right. It's like, to, I, I always equate it to what, like, somebody force, forcing me to look at empire, and I don't like empire. Right. But if you tell me, look at empire on this day because the topic that's going to be the show topic mm -hmm. is something that I think you can learn something from. Then people be more adapt right. to, li to listen and look at things that they don't want to listen to. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. And that's, and that's what we have to teach people do whatever it takes to nurture someone, to bring them to change. Mm -hmm. And it's people like yourself that's, that's doing that. So what are some of your, your, your most difficult challenges? And we're going to ask that question on air too. Um, in dealing with, you know, you know the people that come in contact with you. Is it is it emotional when you actually sit down and talk to the people? Oh, absolutely. You know, anytime you're um, helping someone through an issue, and especially an issue that's personal to you as well, you ought to. You know, I I can take myself immediately back to the place where they are right. at any given time. That's good transparency. You know? And too, so, yeah. it, but you have to be transparent. And so mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, I'm 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 still grieving, right. but. At the same time, I have to help those that those that are grieving as well, and so Thanks, um, it's it's a it's a it's a difficult, but it's necessary. Okay. All right. Well, we're about to come back on the air. I, once again, for my Facebook listeners, it's one 7876 1-800-450-7876. I love it. I thank God every day for giving me this platform because I'm learning something. <laughs> if y'all don't learn, then I'm sure learning something. <laughs> Believe that. Hi, right, welcome back. You're listening to the Archie Beslow Radio Show, Let's Figure It Out. And I'm in the studio with two dynamic females. Reverend Robin Smiley. I'm going to give her her full name because anybody that has Reverend behind their name, I'd give all praise and honor and glory to them. And Miss Connie Gilmore. Wow, such a dynamic story in itself. Um, before we left off of the air, we were talking about people disconnecting themselves with God for whatever reason, because I guess what he failed them or something, or something didn't turn out right. <laughs> let me let me give y'all my spell about it. I'm a praying man. I pray every night. I have daily conversations with with you know God above, and um, I see some of the things that I do and some of the things I come through, and I see the results of me having that relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. And I say that to teach people about the spiritual connection with God or whomever your creator is or whomever you believe in. You have to have some type of spiritual connection in order to actually exist and to perform on earth. So I was just asking Miss Connie prior to us going off air about how difficult is it to actually have these conversations, being a widow herself and actually having to have to talk to these people. And um, you can elaborate on that some more too, ma'am. Um, so it, it, it can be very difficult because at any moment, you know, you have to take yourself back to maybe even that mm -hmm. very place of the initial grief, which is always the hardest um, time period. But at the same time, the transparency and being able to be relatable and relate to where they are specifically on that journey, um, it, it's very encouraging for them and it gives them the opportunity and it makes them feel like they have the opportunity to open up and connect. And once they connect... We, we remain connected because they realize that it's a genuine connection, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm there to help. And, you know, when, when, when something like this initially happens, you will question God. Right. You know, your life changes completely. Your children lose their father. You lose your husband. That's loss of income. Some people have to lose their homes, jobs. You know, it, it's, it has so many layers of loss that goes beyond losing a spouse. 
And so you will at times feel like, you you know, God, why me? Because mm -hmm. I've asked that question, mm -hmm. why me? Mm -hmm. But you have to continue to hold on to him because I can attest to the fact that he is a keeper Amen. and that he will keep you through it and he will position and give you people just like he birthed this vision out of me mm -hmm. as a help, okay. you know. And so when you have people that are willing to help you through your challenges and to be able to relate to you throughout those challenges, it's encouraging. And everybody is not going to be at the same level. Everybody grieves differently. Right. Everybody doesn't have a spiritual element in, in their grief process, and that's fine too. You know, we get through it together. We, we encourage one another. We talk to one another, and we do pray for you. Whether or not you're praying for yourself, I'm praying for you there because you I realize that prayer is the key, and that's the only way you're going to get through it. And so sometimes you do get in this rut where you don't feel like praying for yourself, but if the Lord surrounds people around you that pray for you, mm -hmm. then he still got his hands on you. And it's proven. It's God, proven. it's proven. And I don't get why people don't grasp that it's proven. In spite of everything I've done and you guys that may have done, he still show us favor. Absolutely. And and we don't, like a lot of people repent. And I'm not going to go churchy with them. Like I told my guests, they, they already know. I told them I, I can go anywhere with this conversation. But it's when the good Lord puts something on my heart, I have to speak on it because that's the message that he put in me based off of what you guys are giving me. A lot of people take repenting for granted. Don't just do something on purpose and then go for repent and then say, God, please forgive me, forgive me. But you keep doing the same thing over and over again. At some point, like anything, that gets old. Mm -hmm. So, but we let me let me. I don't want to get off tangent here. So, come coming come up higher ministries. So Miss Robin and she's going to elaborate on even more. She deals with single single people, marriages, um, people that are divorced. Um, definitely marriages to try to keep them together. Mm -hmm. um, single people to to give them the I guess the understanding on the decisions they need to make in order to move forward to be in a positive marriage. Mm -hmm. So if you can, ma'am, you can pick any one of those topics you want to speak on. Okay. Um, I'm going to tackle the singles first because as we asked, you know, why, how did this ministry get birthed? You know, when I think about, you know, when I was single and I really didn't have anybody to give me um, the knowledge that I needed to even prepare myself for marriage. Even though I grew up in a, in a home where we went to church, my grandfather was a pastor, I, you know, I had two parents in my home, so I had somewhat of an example, but, you know, I never really got the foundation of what was required um, for marriage. And the, the key I want to say to the singles is appreciate your singleness. Mm. Learn who you are before you can be a part of anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, because so often we think, you know, we need this spouse to complete us. But you have to understand that you are complete before you even get that spouse. Mm -hmm. And until you get to the point where you are complete within yourself, not that you are, um, you know, some women, I don't need a man. I'm not saying that type of attitude. But to the fact that you understand who you are, um, if you establish that relationship with Christ, then even understanding who you are in Christ then when he brings that Boaz to you, you're more prepared to come together um, in that marriage. Speak, t so Ms. Robin, Reverend Robin, speak towards the people taking that for granted, single people taking that for granted. Say, for instance, um, a good person come into their lives and just say, hey, they're not ready for that person yet. So is that a fault or that's just bad timing or what? And my, my thing about taking it for granted we want people to, to be with the right person. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of people kind of just go through so many people. And I, to me, I think they're just taking their singleness for granted. That's just me. Because you, you see somebody, you see something in someone, mm -hmm. but you don't take time out to really grow with that person. Right. So what are you really looking for? Mm -hmm. Right. It's all about your mindset. Um, I can say myself, you know, I rushed into my first marriage, yeah. which is, you know, part of the reason it didn't work. Um, so you have to take that time to, to get your mind right about, you know, what is it that you're really looking for in this relationship? Um, we did a, a video interview f to advertise the conference with a uh, couple, um, some pastors. And Pastor Todd, he said, you know, you get, you don't get what you want, you get what you choose. Okay, that's you facts. <laughs> so we often say we're going to make this laundry list of what I want my spouse to be like, but then we choose something different mm -hmm. and then when things don't work out we like well I, I don't want to do this anymore but you made that choice so we have to really understand you know what it is that we want what are our deal breakers and not compromise okay so from the the divorce let's go to the to the, the marriage couple the couple that was married for 20 years 
or so, and the marriage ended. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you, and we're not going to say who's at fault, but it ended. Mm -hmm. So, and we know for the ladies, it's hard, any, ladies are emotional, they're more emotional than men, if we just, just facts. So what advice would you give a, a woman who's spent 20 years of her life with the man that she loves so much, mm -hmm. and then for whatever reason, it broke off? The advice that I would give is the same advice I ended up giving myself. I was married for 10 years, and my marriage ended. And what I had to realize, I had to take accountability and responsibility for um, what I did in that marriage mm -hmm. that may have caused that. Um, a lot of times we as wives, we enable our spouses to do certain things and to treat us a certain way. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn um, how to speak up for what we want and what we don't like. Um, and what we need. So someone who's been married for any length of time and your marriage has ended in divorce, do a self-evaluation. What did you learn from that? How can you say, okay, I could have done this differently, I could have done that differently. You know, even those who, like myself, I was like, I prayed, I fasted, I did this, that, you know. But God said, you know, but it was too much I in there. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Valid. Yes, because that, that, that's how I got mad at God. I'm like, but God, I did this. I prayed. I fasted. I was at church, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and he was like, yeah, but it was I. You didn't allow me right. to do that. I, I often say, tell people, don't judge the messenger often. Listen to the message. Mm -hmm. Because he, he positions and put people in our, in our lives, things in our lives, situations in our lives for us to really find out who we are. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we want to try to do, do right by as many people as we possibly can. So another question for you too, Robin. What age should individuals take relationship serious? At what age? We like Because that's where a lot of our young kids are getting into these emotional... And parents don't... So what do a parent tell a, a, their daughter that's 16 and she's like head over heels in love with this dude... And the mom and the dad, neither one of them like to do. I mean, I think I think as parents, you, you got to be honest. You got to be transparent. I mean, we we were all there, you know, at sixteen. I, I became promiscuous, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we we got to have a real talk with our yeah, with our, you our young mm -hmm. people. We got to, you know, things are so much even more dangerous out here. All the diseases and everything that can be um, gotten, you know, we we got to sit them down and say, hey, this is what's really going on in the relationship. And this first guy, nine times out of ten... Ain't going to be the one. Ain't going to be the one. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's a, don't have the fairy tale. Right. You know. what's, a good, what's a good age? What's a, I, I, often, I used to tell guys, and this is me personally, don't get, the guys don't get married till you're 35. Mm -hmm. Because guys, are, we, men are all over the place. Mm -hmm. And you would hope, at least by 35, that they kind of got some concept of what kind of man they're going to be. Yeah, I, I say it's hard to put an age on it. Okay, that's fair. Um, you know, for me, my first marriage, I was 32. But, you know, I when I was in college, I was supposed to be married right after college. I and this, you. That, you know, so you can't really put an age on it. You got to be mature mentally and spiritually before you enter into a marriage. So okay. you could be 25 and be at that place. Or, like you said, 35. It's, mm -hmm. it's just no set age. Right. For, the, for the single one minute? Like, oh, yeah, this is my man. He keeps me on point. Appreciate you. So from the single aspect, and I know single is important because that's that's the start of that's the start of life, being single and actually getting into a relationship. Because once you actually tie into somebody, mm -hmm. your life changed. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that the decision is the right decision. It can't be emotional. Right. It has to be factual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and um, what do you think as far as, What's the mindset? I know you said what you said about what's the mindset of going into a relationship fresh? What should you, you should be open to receive whatever your partner is going to bring or you should already be stuck on your ways. If this person is not this way, then I'm not going to be a part of it. No, you, can, you can't be stuck, but you do have to have a, a, a foundation of what you know you need. Okay. Um, because we, we continue to grow, so they're not going to always stay six foot five and uh, 200 pounds or whatever you're looking for because as time goes on somebody gonna get fat somebody gonna lose their hair you know <laughs> right. um, so you, you can't get stuck on this laundry list of things that you had but you do have to be open all to right. receive all right cool hey we'll be right back again listen to the archie beslow radio show let's figure it out on wal 95.9 fm 1450 am wodcnews.com information is power we'll be right back
right, so that's pretty much. So like me, I'm like I said, I'm all over the place, but I'm still in the same mm -hmm. because what happens is I'm learning from you guys. Mm -hmm. Y'all learn from me. That's just how we enhance. Right. When we go out now, we can talk about different things. I love what you're doing because there are people that are not talking about it because everybody thinks that they know. Right. And what we have to do is we have to teach people to listen and how to be good listeners. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and somehow we're going to try to um, implement that in this, on this show. They actually teach people, why should you listen? Mm -hmm. Because some people, they look at you like, okay, you know how people do, she don't know what she's talking about. Right. She, she was married. Right. You know, right. she don't know what she's talking about. She's still emotional. How she, you know, how she feel? Mm -hmm. but, you, but you do know. Right. And, but you know, right. And, and we have and to teach people. We have to teach people. Mm -hmm. And not just people, you know, my ministry, um, which is how, you know, Reverend Robert and I, you know, we're able to collaborate on this. And I'm sure there'll be, there'll be other things to come. Mm -hmm. Because um, my ministry reaches the widow. And the married, outstanding. Because and I want you to the, speak to that what too. What the married yeah. does is they they get a greater appreciation mm -hmm. for what they have because gotcha. we take those things for granted. There you yeah. go. You know, and yeah, if you have, that word again, you know, granted, you, yeah. you take it for granted. Yeah. You take for granted that you know this will this, that we're going to grow old together, mm -hmm. or that when I leave home in the morning, he's I'm gonna, we're going to come back to each other in the evening. Mm -hmm. But there's so many things that happen in between that day that could change that. I you just, I, you just took words out of my mouth. There's so many things that we. If we think before we talk, and if we think before we act mm -hmm. on a regular basis, the world will be just a better, will be a better place. Mm -hmm. A lot of us come, a lot of us use emotion as an excuse. Mm -hmm. You know, well, hey, you know, I'm going through something, or today is a bad day, whatever, whatever. But you're about to affect the person that you say you love because you didn't give me that benefit of the doubt to think before you spoke. Mm -hmm. But yet, you will go to work, or you'll go hang out with your friends, and you're on point with the conversation. So that doesn't make sense to me. Right. Mm -hmm. So don't don't be at odds with me. Right. <laughs> and then when you walk out the door, you put on your facade. Well, not rather for you. Give, give me your facade. Right. That's right. make the little household a little better for right. me. <laughs> right. <laughs> for me. Right. Right. You feel me? Yeah. So we have to, um, on Facebook family, I was telling the ladies that we have to actually teach people. You got to come back up? All right. That's my man. All right, welcome back to the Archie Bezlo Radio Show. The, the, the conversation gets even heated off. They they always say the best conversation is the after meeting conversation. But we was um, come on, ladies, y'all gotta help me out. We just talked about a whole lot in between that break. I know one thing we talked about. Oh, they teach people how to listen. Mm -hmm. So you have two dynamite, dynamic young ladies in the studio today, Miss Connie, Miss Robin, and I just spoke to them about what happens if you're trying to get a message across. And people don't want to listen to your message. What methods do you use to not force people to listen? But what can you tell our listening audience some things that they need to actually look out for when people are actually trying to give them a good message? I say experience. Mm -hmm. Experience is key. If someone is sharing with you what they've gone through, listen to what they've gone through, and then most importantly, how they overcame that. Okay. Um, because if they're willing to be transparent and share you know, what they've gone through so that you don't have to go through that. You know, even as, as young people, we don't want to listen to our parents, you know, we think they <laughs> don't know anything, right. you know. Because um, I remember my dad growing up was, you know, always trying to talk to me about saving and finances, and, you know. I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. You know, and now today, I wish I would have listened a little more. I'd have, you know, a bigger investment portfolio. Mm. So we have to understand that when people are sharing about their experiences, it's only to help you mm -hmm. come up higher um, in your life. All right. 1-800-450-7876. Again, that's 1-800-450-7876. And you guys, I'm always reaching out to you guys to, to show my guests some love because my, my guests are doing diligent work out here in our neighborhoods. And it's like, hey, you, you, have, to, you have to let people know that you appreciate what they're doing so they can continue to do because you just, you just never know that they may, may be the person that may help somebody in your family. Absolutely. And if you turn a blind eye or deaf ear to what these people are trying to talk about, then, hey, you may miss out. You guys made a valid point. The whole take for granted thing is, I think, is just valid. I think society in itself takes things for granted. So we come from, so singles, married, divorced, separated, um, BFFs. Let's, let's, let's touch this BFFs. I don't, I don't, people don't talk about that a lot. What you guys feel about this whole BFF situation? Is that a 
a ploy for one of the others to have an out? Is that like a way of having an open relationship? And if I'm off task here, Rev, let me know. I want to, I want to stay on task, but is, can can this play into what we talk about? You know, you just said something good there <laughs> that I hadn't even looked at with, with the whole BFF thing. You know, but it's, in a marriage, you know, you've got to be cognizant of your friends. Right. You know, a, a woman... You know, does she have male friends? If she does, her, her husband definitely needs to know about hey, it and vice versa. There shouldn't be any secret, you know, meetings with male friends. But even with that, you know, what is really the purpose of it? Because you don't need to be communicating with this BFF about things that you're not sharing with your spouse. Uh, okay. You know. Ms. Connie? I mean, I agree with that totally. <laughs> you know, you have to be able to have, you know, transparency in your relationships. And if, if it's your BFF, then they should respect, you know, that there's boundaries in, in there yeah. are boundaries in any relationship. Everything ain't for everybody. Absolutely. All right. You're going you gonna to add that to, that's going to be one of your... Yeah, we're we going to talk can about it. Can, can I get a little, can I get a little, <laughs> let, me get a little let me get a little close there. <laughs> so we're we going to jump back into it. So you, you, um, Ms. Connie, you were speaking to, um, to how the merge, merge people... And that's 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 powerful in itself. Uh, wow, a married couple should actually have conversations with someone as a widow. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's that's absolutely. That's profound in a, in a way because absolutely. you don't think about because it. Because you don't think about it. And when you're married and everything's going along well or not so well, right. but you still don't think about. You know, we don't plan for that. We don't right. think about those things. We don't have you know estate planning in place. We don't have wills. Right. You know, we're in this generation. We don't do those things, do and so then when something happens, then nobody knows what to do. And and in addition to that, in the relationships, we take them for granted. You know, you have a spouse, mar- a wife or a husband, and you you know you speak to them. You guys don't speak in love. You don't you know you don't you don't carry yourselves in love. You don't you know you leave the home in the morning. You don't say goodbye. You don't I love you. No I love yous. No kiss. You just assume. Yeah. That you're going to meet back up at that same place in that evening, but suppose you get that call at lunchtime that your husband was tragically killed in a car accident, as so many of my widows have, yeah. or that he's unresponsive and has to be rushed to the hospital. Don't take those things for granted. Your relationships, and not just marriages, but you know, in relationships as a whole, don't take them for granted. You know, life is fleeting. We have so many things going on just within our own community, not let alone the things that are going on in the world that impact families mm-hmm. and we have to be able to um, be cognizant of those things and not take them for granted not take the people in our lives for granted you know and and love on people right. you know love and forgive and forgive forgiveness is key you must forgive mm-hmm. we hold so many grudges we hold on to things that happened years ago we can't remember why we're mad but we don't we're mad we, so we don't let, want to talk me, about let that. me let me let me let me do this one. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the magnitude and measure of forgiveness at what point do you forgive? Is are there any levels? Forgiveness is forgiveness. You must okay. forgive. Th- does everybody hold to that? Absolutely not. Do you feel me? So let's talk about it. Absolutely not. You know, people have that you know, that's a very difficult thing to forgive. So I always say, so this for me, this and I get on my mom a lot. So if you believe in God or you don't. Mm-hmm. That's facts. Right. That's that's what I'm gonna We're all imperfect. Correct. If a person does something out of character, hear me, out of their character, which means this is not something that they consistently do. At that point, there should be some form of a dialogue. What happened? Why did it happen? Let's talk about it. Opposed to saying, that's out of character, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, and then you're going about their business. So now that person that confided in you, really at that point when they got out of character, they're really crying out for help. Mm. A lot of people that do things, they don't want to do it, but there were some type of other distractions or some type of other persuasions that forced them to do that. So what do you what do you guys have to say to the people that even give up on their spouses when something doesn't happen the way that it should have happened? That, that's, that's the reality of marriage. That's mm-hmm. the reality of the ring is what I'm going to talk about at the conference with, mm-hmm. with Reverend Robin. And, you know, part of being in a marriage or being in a relationship, it requires lots of forgiveness, lots of compromise, you're going to apologize for some things that may or may not be your fault. Right. Um, that's the only way that you're going to be able to foster a healthy relationship. You, it has to be a balance of those things. Right. And you have to be able to compromise and to forgive. And, you know, 
if you're going to mar marry this person and you're going to get married, you have to know that all days are not going to be good days. That's true. And you have to have an attitude of, I'm going to fight through this because it's worth fighting for, that these vows meant something to me, that, that, that for better or for worse. What happens if worse comes first? Do you, do you, so let's do, let's do this one. So if, you, if you're in a marriage and you have a, a praying spouse and a, a, a spouse that respects God, Mm -hmm. But it's not a praying person. Why wouldn't you? I don't want. Let's not say forced prayer. Why not say, okay, well, can we pray? Let's pray together. Or can you pray with me? Or can you sit beside me while I am praying? You see, what I'm saying if we kind of bring that dynamic into a lot of our situations, now the person won't just be competing, be competing against the flesh. They actually be competing against spirit, spirituality, and God. So. We have answers and we have solutions, but we don't actually engage on some of the tools that we have. Make relationships and families. Just think about it. if a family blows up, if everybody's just kirking out, and somebody in that family say, "Hey, I want everybody to come in together and let's pray," and that person that bring everybody in to pray doesn't even have to be the person to lead the prayer. They should point to that person that's hostile and say, "Hey, we need you right now because there's something going on inside of you." That we don't know what's going, it's affecting the family. Mm -hmm. So can you, if you don't care about yourself, but can you at least pray for us? So now what you're doing is, now you're forcing that person to connect with God. Mm -hmm. If we truly believe in God. So there's going to be something that's going to touch that individual. Because we all are emotional. Absolutely. You see the dynamic in that? So instead of just letting one another go their own separate ways, say, no, you're not going anywhere. We're going to either talk about it, or we're going to pray about it, or we're going to call somebody like Reverend Smiley. Or we gonna reach out to that family member in our family that's strong, mm -hmm. you know? Or we gonna rewind our tape in our head about somebody that had that same conversation with us a couple of weeks ago, once again, that we took for granted because we didn't want to listen. Mm -hmm. So, what can we tell our listening audiences? Give us some. Let's give our audiences some tools that they need to kind of reconsider their thinking before they just go off on a tangent, you know, in an evil matter. Well, it's interesting that we're talking about forgiveness because our women's fellowship yesterday was on forgiveness. And one of the first things that they pointed out is that um, in order for there to be forgiveness, there has to be a conversation. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't be mad at you because you bumped me in the hallway and, you know, I decided I don't want to talk to you no more and you have no idea that that's what happened. Right. You know, in a marriage, it's a little more serious than that. You know, you can't just stop talking to your spouse mm -hmm. because they did you know, they cook the eggs too hard or whatever the situation is and, and your spouse doesn't even know. Right. So there has to first be a conversation to say, you know, um, babe, when this happened, this is how it made me feel. If you truly love that person. If you truly love that person. Because a lot of times we're in relationships and we have issues with people and they don't even know that we have an issue. Right. You know, so, and this is work. You know, this is friendship, this is marriage. It, it goes across of all course. aspects of right. relationships. But, you know, in, in the marriage, you definitely got to have that open line of communication. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't tell that person what it is that's eating at you, again, this is what I learned. Mm -hmm. I, I never said when you did X, Y, and Z or when you didn't do. So they continue to do it, but I continue to be hurt, right. you know. Um, so in order for there to be forgiveness, you got to have the conversation. And then after you have the conversation, you mention the word repent. There has to be a true, genuine yes. repentance, yes. you know, a true act of, I'm sorry, I understand now how this has made you feel, and, and I honor you as such that I'm not going to do this again, right. you know. If that person chooses not to repent, you know, then it makes it a little more difficult for them to receive your forgiveness. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> I love it. I, I like I said. I, I can't. I think I say this every show. Conversation. We take that for granted as well. And 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 I wasn't always a communicator. I wasn't. And when when you think about when you get older, you realize, wow. If I had communicated mm -hmm. in my early ages, mm -hmm. like people telling me, communicate, I will be a better person. I will also made a couple of other people in my path better people Absolutely. all right so we um we're going to take another break um again um and join this conversation with miss connie reverend robin smiley and um wow um thanks we'll be back we'll be back i don't want to get choked up on the air but <laughs> we'll be right back so that's 
Let me see what some of our Facebook people talking about. Let's see what we got here. We can answer some of their... So Blue Dove says, when you forgive that person, you have to release them from having the power over you. Mm -hmm. To even call another man BFF is not respectful. Yeah. Okay. Your BFF is or supposed to be your hubby. You shouldn't have a BFF if you're married. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be a hundred of That's going to be a show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you I'm going to do a show. <laughs> And I think the, the whole BFF thing is a, and it's me, it's kind of, I, I admit, I got a couple of female BFFs. Mm -hmm. And and, this, and anything is debatable. So the way I look at it is like they're, they're cool, there's no intentions of anything. Mm -hmm. right. We just got straight conversation. They'll call me if there's something going on with their boyfriend, their mm -hmm. kids, or or, or I'll call them if I need to run something by them. So just like with anything in life, there are, everything is not bad if it's conducted in a proper and respectful way. Right, you just have to have boundaries. You got to have boundaries. You have to have boundaries. And, and, and your BFF should know your spouse. Exactly. It should be, the, so if it's a, a if, so if, you, if you're hesitant on introducing your BF to your spouse, then that's not your BFF. Right, and, and. You need to cut it off. You need to cut it off. Right, right, right. I might even come up with a book. The definite, I need, might even break down the whole BFF mm -hmm. thing because people take that for granted. Let's see what else we got in here. One minute. One minute? Yeah. My man. There you go. See, since the, my other engineer, I still been this job talking. <laughs> I'm just playing tiny because I know you're listening. All right. So, yeah, we, um, I'm trying to give love to some of my Facebook people here. Good morning. Have faith. Like a mustard seed. And I'm going to have a show about that too. People have a, like a lot of these biblical little quick hitters and all that. Yeah, and but that they, was the other part about the forgiveness. You got to forgive by faith. We're going to now. So we come back on the air, man. We gonna, <laughs> I want you to lead in with that. We're going to lead in with that. Because that's. Yeah, we're going to lead in with that. Let's see if I can get everybody. I ain't, I ain't on big time, did all the big screen things, man. <laughs> Good topic, guys. Good stuff. At ninety-five point nine FL. All right, we're back. Um, so Reverend Re Reverend Robin Smiley, just what's that thought we just said about the whole? Yeah, I'm getting old. You know, I forget. What were we talking about? about taking so we were talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness. There we go. Right. There and we so go. we talked about, first of all, there needs to be a conversation in order to um, be able to forgive. There needs to be true repentance in order for the person to even experience your forgiveness. But then forgiveness, sometimes things are so difficult and you're like, how can I forgive? You have to do it by faith. Mm -hmm. And the Bible talks about faith the size of a mustard seed. If you ever seen a mustard seed, it is so small. You know, a lot of times when we think of faith, we think it has to be so huge and so big. Mm -hmm. But it just needs to be just a little bit of faith that you um, exercise to forgive this person for whatever way they've wronged you. And when you deposit that, that mustard seed size of faith, and you water it, you know, with your prayers, it's going to bloom and blossom into something that is so massive. You know, um, the, the mustard seed, the tree ends up being really huge. Mm -hmm. And um, when you use that faith and, you, and like I said, you water it with the word and with your prayers, then you're better able to forgive not that person, but even the next person that may come along around and um, hurt you. But again, okay. it's by faith. Okay. So before we, um, I don't want to run out of time, ladies, so... Both of these dynamic young ladies have um, something going on. You guys can speak to your, your individual events that you have going on. Uh, you can, who want to start first? Yeah, I'll start. Yeah. Um, so, again, Come Up Higher Ministries, we are hosting our second annual relationship conference. It is Saturday, April the 21st. It's going to be at the Greenbelt Marriott. We are so excited. We have Willie Moore and Patricia Moore Jr. as our keynote speakers. So if any of you listen to 104.1 or, um, you know, you're on Facebook, you've probably heard um, them. They have a new book out, Happily After All. Our first um, 50 people will receive a photo op with them, and our first 100 will also um, receive a copy of their book. The conference is at the Greenbelt Marriott. Um, we'll start at 9 o'clock. It's for the single, engaged, 
widowed, married, and divorced. So you can register at www.uphire.org slash events. Outstanding. Ms. Connie? Uh, um, yes, Premature Widow, we are hosting our second annual Jazz Brunch on Saturday, April the 28th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, we have uh, Mr. Marcus Young and friends coming to um, provide our jazz music. Um, all of us um, D.C. locals, we know Sugar Bear. Sugar Bear will be there as my special musical guest as well. And the current state's attorney of Prince George's County, Mrs. Angela also Brooks, will be my keynote speaker. Okay. Um, so we are going to have a really good time. There will be vendors there. We'll, um, we'll share. Please come out. Even if you're not, it's not just for widows. It's for families. It's a good time. Mm -hmm. And it's a good opportunity to be um, in the room so that awareness can be made to you. You can take it back to someone. Because, again, this is an issue that at some point affects, can affect any home. And so, and, and just as you mentioned, it, it may not be you today or anyone you know today, <laughs> right right. but it could definitely be someone you know tomorrow yeah. that has gone through this and can need this. And, and come in and support. And if you can't support, if you're unavailable that day, please feel free to sponsor another widow to attend. The tickets are $45. The event will be at the Marlboro Moose Lodge in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Okay. And the tickets are on Eventbrite at pwjazzbrunch.eventbrite.com. And again, it's on April the 28th, 11 to 3. It's going to be amazing. Chef Mac and Cheese is going to do our... Mac and Cheese? Yes, our, our food. It's going to be amazing. He's incredible. We're going to have incredible music, incredible speakers. Just come in and have a good time. It'll be a really, really good afternoon. Fun. And Reverend Robin will be there, too. You'll be able to be there as well. Okay. All right. Well, we're not going... We, st we, still, we still got some something to talk about here. Um, powerful show. I, I love it. Like I, like, I can't say it enough. I love having the platform to help people i love people like yourself that are doing the work and we all know we 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 i'm and i'll be the first one to admit it, i do what i do because i love blessings more than i love money mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel me mm -hmm. i love seeing i love for young men and young ladies to call me and say hey coach Archie, thank you for what you said that day i love when moms and dads call me when they've lost total control over their kids and they say hey coach Archie, can you help me my most proudest moment was when a father called me to assist him with his 16-year-old daughter. Mm. You know how powerful? And that's, that's nobody but God mm -hmm. to allow another man to call a man to come talk to his daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the word uh, for granted, we're not in a position to take anything for granted. Anything. Because he gave us the tools and armored us with all this, what we have, to go out and help others. So we have a commitment and a dedication to bring change. Right. And, and you have to be able to be transparent about what you've gone through. Gotta do it. Because, you know, when you are able to tell someone what you've gone through, you're helping somebody. And so that's what I had to learn with Premature Widow. I'm helping others because I was bold enough to stand up and say, hey, this is what's going on with me. Right. And I, I feel like I know that there has to be some other people that are in this boat with me. Mm -hmm. And so I just, you know, I put it out there. And, you know, social media has been amazing. And, it, and it's grown. And it's so many people that it has helped, you know. And everybody's at a different phase. You know, it's a very mm -hmm. delicate subject. Everybody doesn't want um, to be, you know, identified immediately as a widow or, you know, that type of thing, but over time, you know, and, 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 and they need to know that there is something there when you're ready um, that will help you, you know, navigate through those things. And, and again, for any issue, you know, whether it be marriage, you have problems in your marriage, you know, sometimes you don't tell people your business necessarily, right. but, you know, you want to be able to say, hey, I've gone through something similar, awesome. you know, and these are some of the tools that help me get through it. And that's, that's what this is all about. That's, it's a ministry, it's ministry of help. You all help right. it. Well, um, I would be remiss. I do it every show. So Archie has this magic wand thing. I always pass my magic wand to my guests. If I give you this magic wand and you had the power to bring change to whatever you want to bring change to, what would you use your magic wand on? It would start with you, Rev. I would want to see change um, in the African-American community, um, especially with um, businesses. Yes, ma'am. Um, we don't support each other. Um, as an entrepreneur myself, you know, it's difficult to, to get our people to support each other. Even in ministry, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever reason, we just, we wait till the last minute to do things, or we always want a discount, or, you know, mm, no, not enough. you know, it's, <laughs> we just need to, you know, but yet we're quick to go to Come on, man. the other, um, 
markets and support them. But even when we do give them our like, last, right? Mm -hmm. You would give them your right. last. You know, when we even offer the same service and mm -hmm. most and of the time, right. a cheaper price and better quality. Yes. But because it's us, we just don't support it. So that's what I would like to see. I'm going to dive in quick, Connie. Um, so, of course, mine would be, um, you know, just as a community of help, you that's know, right. and I feel like, you know, don't don't look at the the organization as you know oh this is something that doesn't apply to me so I don't want to support it because mm -hmm. what we what I do realize is that where there's a widow there's most likely there's children yes ma'am and if and if we don't support this mission then when the children grow up and then you ha then they come to you coach Archie because they're 16 or 17 yes, having behavioral issues yes, but nobody knew that when he was 6 his mother died or his father died Preach. and nobody got him counseling yep. no help was provided and so he was grown up to be an angry teenager and everybody's calling him a troubled child yep. but there were issues so don't don't ignore the missions don't support them support them in any way possible mm -hmm. come out support you know widows love to see support all at, we, we need support. We need the support. We want to make raise awareness to this. There are so many communities and churches. If I had a wand, I would be able to put this organization and make sure I get in front of every church yeah, in D.C. and Maryland, Virginia, so that in their community, because in all of these churches, there are people in the same situation that have nothing. And so my goal is to raise awareness and make it a household name and that it's, it's known around here. So that, that, Because people need this help. They do. They need this help. All right, well, once again, um, I want you guys to, once again, Ms. Robbins, speak on your conference once again, just in case somebody missed it. Mm -hmm. Give them the information again about where it is and the date. Okay, so on Saturday, April the 21st, we're having the Before, During, and After I Do Relationship Conference. Willie Moore and Patricia Moore, Jr. are our keynote speakers. We also have Sister Connie Gilmore here, who is our panelist and facilitator for our widows. We have Dr. Rita Bailey Brolin, who will be um, facilitating finances. We have Pastors Todd and Ingrid Pickett of Love First Marriage Movement. They'll be on our panel, um, as well as we have DJ, DJ Tommy Styles. We have a psalmist, Larry Vaughn, and we just added um, a comedian, Kason Wilson. So we'll have vendors, um, lunches included with your registration. So make sure you register today at www dot up higher dot org slash events all right well we got a couple of minutes um so let's do this so miss connie we'll start with you what would you hope that the people have taken away from today's show um i hope that they will you know have a different perspective on widows widowers right. and widowhood and have a greater appreciation um, for those that aren't in this situation for your marriages and your relationships and that you will support the mission and tell somebody you know and if you you know, you know and try to uh, be as much of a support to this organization as you can take it back to your to your job to your community to your churches and let them know that there's a there is an organization out here that that's doing this type of work to help the people that are surrounding you because again you don't know when this situation don't wait until it's at your door That's right. you know support it now and you know help it to grow while it is and come out come out on the 28th of, of april um join us at the jazz brunch in upper marlboro at the marlboro moose lodge it's 45 dollars tickets are on eventbrite mm -hmm. pw jazz brunch dot eventbrite.com um we'll have an amazing amazing time sugar bear will be there we'll have a good time we'll dance we'll cry we'll laugh we'll eat good with chef mac <laughs> um state's attorney will be there it'll be a great time come out and um, meet me, meet okay. me there. So in closing, what would you, you know, hope that people got out from you, Reverend Ron? The main thing I want people to understand is, you know, when things go wrong, it's not the end. Mm -hmm. We can always bounce back. Um, if we tap into um, our relationship with God and our relationship with others, if we walk in forgiveness, this world will be a better place. Yeah. Much better place. Outstanding. Well, ladies, thank you so thank much. You. It's thank an honor. You. It's always great to gain new friends. Thank you. And that's doing the work of the Lord. So I really, truly appreciate you guys. And at any point in time, I can help you guys in any way. Please feel free to reach out. Thank okay. you. All right. So thank you, my listeners. Again, um, listen to the Archie Beslow Radio Show. Let's figure it out on WL 95.9 FM, 1450 AM, WLDCnews.com, where information is power. Just realize Coach Archie loves each and every last one of you guys. Keep the faith, keep the hope, and please take care of your families. See you next week. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Such beautiful.